Hello YouTube, my name is Mike Martin, and welcome again back to my office, uh, where we're doing another YouTube live broadcast. Tonight's uh, broadcast is uh, probably our third and hopefully final test of this new system, where we're using multiple cameras and streaming live on YouTube instead of uh, our previous platform. So, uh, very happy to, uh, to be here. Tonight's topic um, is actually a subject that's coming right off of our Facebook users group. So if you are a PX5S owner and you have questions, you're looking for support, um, head over to the Facebook group, um, Privia Pro PX5S, and also the PX560 is over there. And uh, people can answer your questions. And in fact, uh, like I said, that tonight's webinar was inspired by one of the questions that was on there. Um, PX5S is uh, a remarkable product. I've talked a lot about it. Uh, obviously, there's been many, many videos about it over the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, it's a product that on the surface is a really remarkable stage piano. But when you dig in, you find that it's capable of so much more. There's a lot of power underneath the surface. Now, this is a live event. Uh, so if you want to... Uh, questions uh, during the event I can see them there's a chat window here and I'm gonna verify that uh, you guys are seeing what I'm doing because this is we're still in beta over here at Casio <laughs> with with the live streaming so I'm gonna just uh, type up YouTube on another window here and make sure that I am seeing myself live there it is all right it is working Okay, perfect. All right. So, back to uh, back to the webinar and the and the reason for being here tonight. So, uh, chat window on the right hand side, and uh, please do uh, participate. Not seeing anybody there right now, but again, we're learning. We're doing something new. Please, please join us. And make sure I've got the chat window, the proper chat window open. Uh, I do. There we go. Leonard is here. He's the one that inspired tonight's tonight's broadcast. So, uh, I'm going to get to your question, Leonard, and uh, that's uh, thanks for popping in on the chat window. So, I mentioned the PX5S remarkable stage piano, but so much more under the surface. And there's many many sound design tools in this product. Uh, one of which, and it's kind of the topic of tonight's webinar is the arpeggiator. Um, now everyone um, probably in their mind has an idea of what an arpeggiator can do. Um, you know, you take it on a piano sound like this, you turn on the arpeggiator and you're getting, you know, you're getting repeated notes up and down the keyboard. And um, the PX5S actually has 100 different arpeggio patterns that are built in a lot of the things that you would expect to hear from an arpeggiator in here as you go through the list, your typical up and down, you know, and uh, down and repeating and up and down three octaves. And that one's got the top and bottom notes being repeated. So a lot of different um, variations of, again, what you would expect an arpeggiator to do. You'll find that. And... Uh, um, as well as a variety of other presets in here that might take you other directions, such as, uh, you know, one of my favorites. Uh, great, great name for some of these. So, uh, so the great thing is about the PX5S is the arpeggiator is fully programmable and, um, well... It, it's more than just an arpeggiator. So let's 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 dive in um, and um, start with um, some. And I call these fa some of these are factory presets because um, although this one, if if you have not gone to Casio Music Forums and downloaded the new version two all file, you won't find this preset, Herbie Rhodes. So believe it or not, this sound. uses the arpeggiator. Um, might not be apparent at first. Uh, 
but this arpeggiator is actually what's creating the the motion in this sound the the stereo panning is being created by that arpeggiator and my microphone popped in and out there for a moment all kinds of technical difficulties tonight so the the stereo imaging the stereo tremolo is that arpeggiator so why did we do it this way so let's uh, let's take a look at this sound real quick. Um, and I'm going to turn off the arpeggiator so we kind of straight uh, sound with none of that tremolo. The reason being is our DSP on this particular sound is is doing our speaker modeling, and this sound by default is pretty clean. Um, but uh, like many of the electric pianos in the PX5S, you have the ability to go in and. And customize them um, and tweak it for yourself. So there's all the 13, 14 different speaker simulations in here. And since the DSP was in use for that, well, we could have done a a, a basic tremolo, uh, mono tremolo on using the LFO. So we could have done that using this guy right here. So that's one way. Um, but Rhodes typically has this nice stereo panner. So that's what we wanted to accomplish in this particular sound. And in order to do it, we used uh, the arpeggiator. So let's take a look at what we've done here with this particular sound. Uh, and I went to the sound edit screen, and that's actually not the right place to go. Over on the left-hand side of the keyboard, there is an arpeggiator button. If you want to get in and edit it, Press and hold it, and now you're getting um, a, a arpeggio select menu. So what I've done here is I've created a two-step arpeggio that's at a quarter note tempo. And instead of doing notes, which is the way that it would default, um, I set it to just do a controller track only. And the cool thing here is, now if I scroll down further, I can choose which controller type it is, and controller 10 is panning. Now back in my main step edit screen here on the arpeggiator, I can set my, my left pan control value. You see it here, controller value. That's my panning to the left and then panning to the right. So those two steps of the arpeggiator are creating um, that that animation to the sound. We're having mic difficulties, all kinds of difficulties tonight. So, um, very cool and yet unexpected use of the arpeggiator in that particular preset that it's not doing, um, again, your typical notes, but it is actually a controller source. Now, in some other version 2 uh, presets, you'll find some, some other sounds where I've done similar kinds of things using the arpeggiator. This is another one of my favorite sounds, again, on a, uh, one that um, is part of that version 2 all file that you can download. This sound has four different uh, components to it, and they're each on a different slider over here on the left. Starting with the piano, some nice reverb in there too. And you'll also find uh, on zone three, woo, there's an arpeggiator in action on zone three. So if we were to press and hold the arpeggio edit button and look at zone three, it's, it's using not the screw up, but the screw down uh, pattern. I think I actually changed the tempo of it. Nope, it's still running 16th notes. So that's pretty much a stock arpeggiator pattern on zone 3. So let's check out what zone 2 is doing. So this is really cool. We've got a piano. And using the sliders here, we can combine these.
But I wasn't content with just uh, a arpeggiator in this sound. I had to use uh, another one. So the sound that is on zone one, um, and again, I'm going to turn the arpeggiator off at this point. And um, just a really cool, airy synth sound. And uh, I wanted some motion to this sound. And again, another way to do that is the arpeggiator. So if we let's uh, let's turn it on, and then I'll show you what I did. So So that sound on zone one has what's typically referred to as a sample and hold type of effect, and it's um, really remarkable, and that is being done with the arpeggiator. And uh, so let's go to the arpeggiator and look at zone one. Well, I didn't take the time to name things. Um, sometimes I'm a lazy programmer. Um, obviously, I started with uh, the screw-up pattern, but that isn't that isn't what is being used here and I was a little bit lazy so take the time to name things uh, when you're programming I didn't so don't do as I do in this case but let's take a look at the parameter screen here of the arpeggiator and you'll see I'm using all 16 steps at 16th notes and again I'm taking advantage of the controller track so it's not arpeggiating notes up and down the keyboard it's doing a controller and in this case, it is doing controller number 74, which is our filter cutoff. So the cool thing is, when we go back to our steps, or each of our 16 steps in the arpeggiator, whatever that controller value is, is the uh, value of the arpeggiator, or our value of the filter across those steps. So that's what's causing the, the, the animation to that sound. That's all of those controller values through those 16 different steps. None of the other stuff actually even matters because we're not using that stuff. Just this controller value. And literally what I did, um, and when you're in this edit screen, your knobs 1, 2, 3, 4 correspond to these four different parameters. So I, I was using the, the plus minus step buttons here to the left of the display and sort of randomly moved knob 4. And then we got a cool pattern. And, uh, you know, I could try that again and maybe not move it as wide and get another pattern. And just... So now we've got another rhythm. So that's two examples of... Uh, right off the bat of how I'm using the arpeggiator in some, some really unexpected ways. And again, an instrument that appears to be a, a stage piano um, is much, much, much more under the surface uh, when you dig in. Thanks for keeping the chat window, guys, going. This is great. Looks like we've got a nice, good crowd going on, so appreciate it. Um, so that's a sound I call magic. There's actually some other cool Easter eggs, as I call them, hidden within this sound. Uh, um, if you play the keyboard a little bit harder, you can get some on that set sound that's on zone two. It has a little slide when you play hard. And he also has a hidden one down in the bass register. That's only when you're playing at those, those peak velocities. So... Pretty, pretty remarkable uh, uh, single preset using the arpeggiator in a couple different ways. And people are commenting, you might have missed the uh, beginning of the um, broadcast. Don't worry, everything will be put on YouTube after the fact. You'll be able to rewind and watch things later. So keep the questions coming. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive in and show you just a few more um, of my favorites. Um, here's one that uh, has not been posted publicly yet. This is a, 
I guess, a, a work in progress. And um, kind of the same idea that I've got um, a, um, elect a piano on zone four. I've got volume control over it and some pads. And again, using that arpeggiator on zone three. So just a real nice combination. So the arpeggiators, just, just to clarify a few things, the arpeggiator is always running at system tempo. Um, so whatever tempo is going here, um, you could tap the tempo and slow it down. Let me turn down the volume. And you could also go in, if you press and hold the arpeggiator button, and look at that particular arpeggiator. Again, you could go in and change its, its note value. Uh, you know, if I want it to be 30 second notes, if I want it to be quarter notes. Um, and you can also determine the number of steps. Um, so you can get some, some nice sort of polyrhythm things. And that sounds going through also a delay effect as well, which is adding some of the animation to the uh, to that particular sound. So again, use your use your imagination, dig in, explore explore some of the presets um, and what they can do. And uh, let's uh, let's go to another factory preset. Oop, chose wrong. Is it thirty six? Is it forty six? I'm missing it. I have forgotten where my own presets are. So let's go here instead. Um, it's uh, the, the, the polysynth sound. I'm not going to play G. And I uh, apologize. My mic seems to be dropping in and out here. Is it 48? Oh, here's one. Okay. Well, here's another real typical uh, arpeggiator kind of sound. And again... Um, this type of preset, you know, that's using, again, probably my favorite uh, screw-up pattern. It's one of my favorites, but I want to show you a couple of the others that are, that are built in, just using this, this sound as a starting bass, and I'm going to read the chat and double-check. So the arpeggiator can also do, um, it can repeat single chords. Okay, so you could set up um, a pattern here. If, again, let me, if, let's go in and look at what the arpeggiator is doing. Um, zone 1, it's using poly 5. And... Um, you could go in and sign different rhythms. So you can see there's steps where it is set to off. And obviously whether, whether it's off, you're getting sort of a rhythmic break in the arpeggio. And uh, you can, um, again, use the knobs for editing in this section. You could also do some fun things. You could change the note values. So on step five, now it's going to go up an octave. Which just keyed me into the fact that this state, this pattern by default is only using eight steps. I can make it do all 16. And again, get in and, and edit these note values a variety of different ways. So we do one an octave up, do one an octave down, all kinds of transposition. So, again, lots of ideas here, um, and I'm realizing right here in the middle of a live broadcast that there's one really cool arpeggiated sound that maybe I should have used. So I'm going to, I'm actually live here, going to move my USB drive over here to my USB hub and pull up a sound from casiomusicforums.com. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to take a look at the chat window and see if you guys are having any questions. I don't see 
anything. It's great to have such a big crowd on here tonight. So this is one of the uh, stage settings I made for um, the PX5S. If I can find it on our form. We are live, so who knows what could happen. <laughs> Mike, can we try something with strings and the arpeggiator? Yeah, I think we could. Ah, okay. First, um, let me let me finish with my own train of thought here, and I'm gonna um, put this sound on the USB drive and show you this one, and then maybe I'll try something with the spring with the string sounds and the arpeggiator. Absolutely. So the one I was going for. Cool. Got it. Injecting my USB drive. There we go. Yeah, there's really no uh, rules to what kinds of sounds you can use with the arpeggiator. There's, um, and I'm going to just choose a location that I'm not using tonight. 46 is where I'm going to load this sound just because I'm not going to be playing organs tonight in this broadcast. And I'm going to load a stage setting, and there it is on the run made famous by the Pink Floyd Band. This is uh, one of the uh, first stage settings that I made when I started exploring what what this arpeggiator could do. And uh, again, it's just uh, so remarkable, the, the depth of, of what's possible. And, and so I'll play this. And if you know the, the Pink Floyd song, uh, this is a sound that, that uh, changes quite a bit over time with filters. So really wild sound, um, pretty accurate to the original um, sound from On The Run. Oh shoot, I forgot the most fun part, the helicopter. So there's a lot of uh, remarkable elements in here. There we go. It's even a uh, sort of a subsonic heartbeat on one of these keys as well. Probably a little too low. So wow, the arpeggiator is being used in this sound like crazy. And um, again, I, in all of my um, webinars, anytime we've talked about programming, regardless of the keyboard, regardless of the product, um, you have to, um, if you've never programmed, you know, the, the, I guess the, my approach has always been to, to take it apart to figure out how it was done. And... Uh, you know, with the PX5S, you know, we've got we've got four, well, by the way, that's pretty wild. I'm, I did that sound with two zones, zone one and zone two, and the arpeggiator. So I still have two more zones that I could, could have used. So, um, you know, one thing we can do when we're taking a sound apart is we can turn off a zone um, and uh, try and take it apart. So zone two, yep, zone two is my helicopter. <laughs> and uh, um, zone one is everything else. So let's take apart zone one, and then we'll return to the helicopter and, and just take a look at, at how this was done. So um, this sound was used. I used a hex layer sound to to um, to make this, um, and there's a couple different elements. Um, First of all, there, there's some basic triangle waveforms just stacked. Um, and there's also, should be in here. I've got triangles. Let's turn them off. Couple sawtooths. 
Ah. I'm surprised it's a sawtooth. Ah, you know why the name's wrong? <laughs> Clever. Um, so, I'm misleading you a little bit. I said take it apart, and I confused you, and I confused myself at the same time. This sound was programmed with version 1 of the PX5S, and there's been software updates since then, and um, so some of the... Um, one of the things we did in those software updates was add more waveforms. And so what's happening here is the name here isn't matching what we're hearing. And I can tell you if, with certainty um, that the sound on layer two, if we were to solo it, turn the other one off, turn the other one off, layer two is is nothing but this this noise. It's a white noise kind of sound, which is up here at the end of our list. There it is, pink noise. White noise, pink noise are about the same. Slightly different frequency content. So I just have that on every key. And on another layer I have one of those pitched elements. So with each note you're hearing um, the hi-hat sound and the, the bass note. And basically um, I created an arpeggiator pattern for that, and I did take the time to, learn to name this one, thank goodness. And I put in the note transposition values here. And check it out, what I did, I accented the, the, the 1 and the 5 with additional velocity, and that is making those hi-hat parts accented. Okay, so if we were, while that's running, go back and edit that tone. That's, that's the hi-hat pattern. And then I have two synth waveforms adding the other business there. And that's one arpeggio. One key. Now, in the um, helicopter sound, which is on zone two, uh, one of the key elements of that of that song is that that helicopter goes from one side to the other. Um, here it is on the left, and then it moves over. First on the right, and then moves over to the left. And again, I was I was looking for a way to do that. I'm using um, all of our tools, and uh, I think I used the arpeggiator to do that. Let's take a look. Panning. So I did a, a panning element at a very slow tempo. And if we looked at those steps, it's moving from the right slowly over to the left and then back. And the cool thing about this, and in the parameter screen, um, you can have it uh, smooth from step to step, but Clearly, I didn't need it, so it's just it's just sliding from one step to the other. So just another sound design tool. It is absolutely kind of crazy again, and this is a piano. Um, quick side note: the first sound that I heard out of out of this 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 instrument when we got the first prototype in was not was not a piano. It was it was one of those synths, and it was just you know a basic sawtooth sound. But when I heard this filter. And how smooth it was, I knew that we had something very, very special. So, um, back on to uh, your questions and the um, chat list. So, Leonard, um, we added, um, I don't know, I don't know exactly how many we added. I don't know, roughly a dozen additional waveforms uh, when we did the version 1.1 update, I believe, is when it happened, or 1.03. So, um most of the elements that were added with the software update were were variations on some core waveforms. Uh, core waveforms, so like sawtooths, we don't just have one sawtooth, we have six different varieties. And when we use them together, that allows us to really um, you know, get some nice uh, animation to those sounds when they're stacked together. If we were to take six um, 
six of the same kinds of sawtooth samples. It is completely sample based and, and stacked them. Um, that wouldn't necessarily sound as good. So when we uh, um, use them this way, uh, it really is amazing. So that was one of the things that was added in one of the updates. So again, that's why um, I bet you'd probably find if you went back to some of the other original um, factory hex layer sounds like this one, some of the waveforms, like there it is, chapel organ, um, some of the names may not match up to what you're hearing. Um, that would be because it was a programmed, and then the, the waveform list shifted a little bit, but it, the keyboard was smart enough to know when that sound was programmed and it all works. So anyway, so back to um, the arpeggiator and, and how remarkable it is. And uh, I think at this point I'm going to address the, the, the big question that was posted on the users group today which was, can the PX5S do wave sequencing? So, Leonard, I have to call you out. It's a ridiculous question. <laughs> and the answer is, well, yeah, we can. I think we can pull it off. <laughs> and the reason I say it's ridiculous is, again, we're talking about what is perceived by a lot of people as a piano. And, and again, this is, this is an instrument that goes much, much, much further than that. So uh, I guess first I have to describe wave sequencing and what um, what that is. And uh, wave sequencing was was made most popular by an instrument. Uh, I guess uh, Roger, if you're on the chat list, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But early '90s instrument uh, by Korg called the Wave Station. Um, remarkable um, combination of some um, some technologies including some things like vector synthesis and this thing called wave sequencing and um, the wave sequencer similar in some ways to an arpeggiator but uh, what would it would allow you to do is on each of your steps you could put a different sample set um, I can simulate this <laughs> Uh, totally ridiculous way. I'm just going to go quickly to a blank, um, blank hex layer sound. But um, if I were to sort of play the keyboard repeatedly while changing the waveform number, you could get these really cool um, animated sounds with all this motion because rhythmically it was creating something that had never been heard before. Um, and I tell you, there's probably not too many movies in the 90s and certainly um, TV soundtracks that the wave, the wave station in particular was not part of. And again, where it, it thrived was this ability to, to, to literally animate what I was just doing uh, physically. So, um, you know, starting with one waveform and then going going to another. And uh, this use of percussive waveforms and, and whatnot um, just allowed it to create some remarkable sounds and great programmers behind that instrument. Um, oddly, um, the wave sequencer, the wave station, wasn't immediately a successful product because it didn't have a piano sound in it. <laughs> uh, people weren't ready. Uh, sometimes instruments are ahead of their time, and that was that was an instrument that that certainly was. So they they came out with a wave station EX that that had piano sounds in it, and uh, and then it became a, a more successful product. But I digress. So the question is, you know, can it be done on on a on a PX five S and you know, the first thing we talked about earlier, you know, there's this controller track in 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 the um, in the uh, PX5S, and oops, I went to the, I need to go to the arpeggiator menu here. And it would be very nice if in this controller track that we could instead of you know having pitch pen messages or filter messages that we could put program changes in it. That would be really cool. Um, and unfortunately, no, we can't. So that eliminates uh, what was the initial thought on how to do wave sequencing on the PX5S. 
So the, um, uh, but don't worry, I didn't give up. Um, like almost everything on this instrument, there's, there's another way. Now, uh, so here's the way that I came up with, and there's probably many, many, many other ways. So what I did, I uh, apologize, I'm kicking my cameras, is I created a sound, and um, as random as I just did, I, I went through six different layers and just grabbed at, at complete random six different waveforms just by spinning the wheel. I threw in a marimba on purpose just because that's a characteristic wave station kind of percussive element. But the rest of them I just threw in at random. The next thing that I did um, is down on the, the bottom of the list is I created uh, a very specific velocity window for each element here. So layer one, you can see, can only will only sound if I were to hit the, a velocity of 64 on the keyboard um, at that moment, and that is hard to do. <laughs> uh, then layer two, I, I set it up so it was a very specific velocity of 65 and 66 and 67 and so on. So each of these six different elements are at a different velocity range. Okay, you follow me? Hopefully. Then, and again, don't pay attention to the name of the stage setting because I haven't had time to name it yet. Obviously, I started with a piano. but So then I went to the arpeggiator. And I went into the step editor. And the first thing I did is I set the, the type of the arpeggiator to P5. And the... Um, that means polyphonic five notes. Um, and then, uh, in fact, I set that for each of the, each of the steps in the, in the arpeggiator. I set to P5 so I can play chords. The next thing I did was I set each step at a different velocity range between zero, you know, zero and, and five and so on. So, um, sorry, got to move the cursor over to select that one. So, but I forgot to explain one more step. I set the arpeggiator at a fixed velocity of 64. So, there we go. So each step of the arpeggiator is at a different velocity, and I just sort of randomly picked those values. And uh, you know we could we could throw in some transpo transposed note values and more. Throw in uh, so now suddenly we're on our way to wave sequencing, and uh, you know, of course, the next thing that I would normally do is we'll add more. <laughs> so. You know, you could then get in and, and turn on another zone um, and, and start adding other things with that. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of uh, different... Uh, elements that you could add and start adding uh, some delay. Um, and again, typical uh, typical me, I, I probably wouldn't stop there. Um, I'd, I'd go in and grab some other simple synth bass sound of some sort um, and and put an arpeggiator on it just because I'm a madman and, and you know pick some some cool pattern for it and uh, and keep going.
So that's kind of the way uh, that I would go about it. Um, and that's, you know, again, we, we could have used a second, that zone two with another hex layer sound and, and, and change the, the variety of, uh, of sounds that are going on there. So I will upload this sound tonight um, as soon as the clinic wraps up so you guys can have it and play with it. Um, this is not a work of art. I literally created it moments before the clinic started. So, um. so if we really wanted to get crazy, um, and, and didn't I say I was crazy, you could go back to zone one. You could add a controller track to it. set it to something like your filter and and make some additional um, changes to those controller steps so you can have and again I typically do this randomly just to I'm just scrolling through the steps and turn a knob four just to and now it sounds even uh, even better so so <laughs> I must admit this is kind of cool so I'm going to um, go ahead and save this whole deal and take the time to name it so it's not uh, concert grand anymore. So um, if if just to cover something really basic uh, that we've covered in some of the previous videos, uh, the knobs. Anytime you're in an edit screen, the knobs can be used for uh, um, entry. You don't have to if you're you know naming a sound. You don't have to hit that button um, 26 times to get from A to Z. So um, so maybe I'll call this. Uh, so I usually use the knob to get me in the neighborhood. And then, oops, then use the cursor keys from there. So a very exciting part of the clinic here is me naming this. All right, check in the uh, chat window for some questions, and I'm not seeing any. Glad that you guys are, are listening to this clinic on something other than uh, laptop speakers. Oh, look at that. Perfect number of characters available. So I will, I will save that to... Um, the Casio Music Forums tonight, and you can download it and dissect it and make your own wave sequence program tonight. So, pretty cool. I mean, uh, again, uh, I would I would typically go overkill. I'd probably even go to that first sound and throw a phaser or a panner on it or something more. That's just me. Um, So now it's panning and tempo, um, all kinds of things. See, now i got to save it again. I keep thinking. So, wow. Uh, so Zebra still asking for string arpeggios. My goodness. Okay, um, I will uh, do my best to, uh, to try and uh, accommodate you. So kind of one of the problems I'm going to run into right away is... Um, um, my string patch is really slow, so I'm gonna have to edit the the attack of of this sound to uh, to do an appropriate um, uh, arpeggiated string. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'll answer the other question: Is there an arpeggiator for each layer? No, there is. There is. There are four arpeggiators, one per zone. Um, 
So. So I'm going to go in and uh, just go ahead real quick. Um, cool thing when you're editing hex layer sounds, you can go through them one through six. You can also select all of them. And I'm just going to quickly go through and... Um, and just speed up the attack of that a little bit. So, um, you know, there's a variety of different ways you could use um, arpeggiators with string sounds. You're putting me on the spot, but I'll, I'll roll with it. Um, again, you know, um, first thing, um, a, a lot of the arpeggiators by default are set to 16th notes, um, which, depending on what you're doing musically, might be too fast. Um, So, you know, I just, I literally just picked one by ran at random. Um, and now we've got uh, something pretty cool. Um, and, and, you know, experimentation is, is the best way to learn. Get in and try some of these patterns. I really kind of liked uh, this just first one and I would probably again edit it I'm looking for the slower tempo set it to eighth notes um, you may reduce the note and then I could increase my tempo a little bit from there oops not that fast so um, you know, if I were to use this in a musical way, I might want to maybe limit my string arpeggio to this part of the keyboard. And uh, so I'm going to set my strings um, to have a, a high range here. Um, you can use the number key, hold down the number key, and then touch the key that you want. I'll just pick middle C. Ooh, well, that didn't work for me. What did I do wrong? All right, I'm cheating. Maybe because my arpeggiator's on. Nope. All right, so I've set a range for this sound. And I'm also going to transpose it up an octave. And really just doing that so I have a little bit more range on the keyboard to work with. Now I go to zone two, turn it on, choose a piano, uh, choose an acoustic piano. And, um, you know, set the range of my acoustic piano so they don't overlap. Because stylistically what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a whole bunch of reverb on the piano. And last but not least, on my second zone, if my arpeggiator is on, it'll work on all the all the zones by default. So you got to go in and turn it, turn it off. But So the next thing I'd want to do maybe is determine how my pedal is working. I don't want the pedal to, uh, um, to sustain the strings. So... Um, that's a controller edit function of zone one. And I'd say I go to pedal one and turn my sustain pedal off. And there we go. So pretty, you know, not, not, uh, not too crazy. And you could adjust the volume levels of these sounds to, to balance what you, what you were looking for. But so many different things you could do. Anyway, so that's one way of, of an infinite number of ways that you could use the arpeggiator and string sounds. And I will, I'm going to go ahead and save this one as well. Um, and I'll upload this one tonight to the forums. So looking on the chat window, other questions you guys have? 
really, really happy that uh, we've got a good crowd here tonight. I'm going to be wrapping tonight's webinar up in just a few minutes. But I also want to tell you that um, one of my goals tonight um, was to get all of this set up at uh, on a different computer in a different room. And here we are once again on YouTube broadcasting from my office, which uh, is kind of a mess, all this stuff in the background. So um, it's very likely that we're going to do... Um, oh, I thought I just named it. All right, I'll, I'll come back and name it again. Yeah, sorry. Uh, trying to do too, th too many things at, at once, but the uh, we're going to be have a different setup, uh, better lighting, better camera views, um, some graphics, some other things that we can do in future videos, and it was my hope to get it set up in there tonight, and I just I did not get it in there, so but very happy that uh, for the last uh, 50 minutes or so we've gotten some people over here on uh, tonight's stream and, and to check check out some of these the amazing things that the arpeggiator can do on the PX5S. Um, one point of clarification, we have um, you know, a new instrument called the PX560. And um, in some ways it's, it's a, uh, a simpler instrument than the PX5S. And in the case of the arpeggiator, it is simpler. Um, it does not have a programmable arpeggiator, and it has only one arpeggiator that you could use um, at a time. Um, you can use it on more than one sound at once, but you can't have different arpeggiators going at once. And um, so that's a one big difference between the two products. And I'm showing you tonight how we can do um, different uh, uh, multiple arpeggiators at once on the, on the PX5S. And... Uh, um, that's one differentiating factor that's that's only possible here on the, on the PX5S, not the 560. So, uh, people was asking if uh, updates coming soon. N uh, no, not uh, not not likely for the 5S. Uh, there is an update coming for the 560 to address just some user interface issues, but uh, not not any changes that I'm aware of to um, to the arpeggiator at this time. I can obviously. Um, if we find that all the 560 customers want that arpeggiator, that's adding the level of complexity. But uh, maybe we can we can put that request in with Tokyo and see what happens. Not nothing's guaranteed in that regard. But uh, so um, another just sort of factory preset in the um, 5S before I wrap up. Uh, part of again the version two sound set that you can download. One called Carried Away, and like I did tonight. Um, I got carried away with arpeggiators. That's actually what <laughs> where the name came from. And so this is another example. Um, so I've got um, using all the techniques we talked about tonight, using the controller track, using uh, I've got a bass in here too. And there's a fourth part, so yeah, the the the, the arpeggiator is such an amazing, um, amazing sound design tool that allows this to create some sounds that uh, to take uh, take from the the chat window sounds very much like Omnisphere and and some very complex software instruments, yes, this this can compete with those kinds of sounds. Um, Leonard, no, I, I doubt we'll have program changes added to the uh, <laughs> to the arpeggiator. <laughs> uh, I can I can ask, but uh, so uh, if you're going through the the factory set on the PX5S, generally speaking, if it ends in an eight, sound number eight, sound number eighteen, Sound number 28, 38, 48, 58. Generally speaking, the arpeggiator is being used on those patches. That's one of the ways we organize the product um, uh, to give you, uh, to help you find your way around all of those sounds. So, um, 
Uh, there's the arpeggiator being used for some, some gated instruments. So do explore all of the... Well, there's an exception. I blew one out for that four zones slider sound that everybody likes. But uh, um, again, some are typical of what you'd expect from an arpeggiator, and others are, are quite... Uh, um, quite remarkable in that they go into a, a wild other direction. So, uh, with all of them, check out what the knobs and the sliders do. So much real-time control. Yeah. So I think that's it for tonight. 56-minute clinic, not bad. And I hope uh, that we'll see all of you and more on our next webinar here live from Casio America. So thank you very much. My name is Mike Martin, and we'll see you again on our next webinar. Take care.